open your Bibles, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7. And I'll go to two other scriptures, at least maybe three more. Uh, I've had this on my heart for a while. I want to entitle this, a victim's, a victim's mentality, a victim's mentality. This idea of I'm a victim, feel sorry for me. Uh, th this attitude, this mindset, believe it or not, which shouldn't be among Christians, is, and it's prevalent, and it's growing. And I talk to a number of Christians, and I just don't understand why they allow this thing to continue. And I've prayed about it, knowing some Christians personally that are going through this thing, you know, woe is me, this happened, that happened, and all of that. And uh, I'm saying, Lord, give me, give me wisdom. Help me to see their situation and, and try and remedy it and give them wise counsel. Now, what the Lord shows me here is something that doesn't really surprise me. A lot of God's people are never going to grow up. They're just never going to grow up. And they comfort themselves with this, woe is me, have pity on me, and look at my circumstances and all that. It's all about them. It, it really is. The, the idea of rejoice all the way, again, I say rejoice, they don't seem to understand that. And uh, they, they wallow in this... Uh, a state of discouragement. I'm not going to say despair, but it's it's. It, it, the Lord said, "Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world." I don't know why this has to go on, but if you look at First Corinthians, chapter six, especially verse seven, uh, it says, "Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you." Now he's talking to carnal Christians, and he's telling them. Uh, Look, I mean, he's giving it to him. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather you suffer yourselves to be defrauded? All right, you got wrong. Oh, Brother Miller telling you know what this one is. Okay, it's not the end of the world. And if you live long enough, who's not going to have all these experiences of being wronged by someone? I mean, it happens. And he says, Paul says in verse 8, Nay, ye do wrong. You're going to court and you're suing one another uh, and defraud and that your brethren. Just let it go. No, well, I can't let it go. I lent so-and-so money, never paid back. Amen. Okay. What's the big deal? The Lord will take care of you. He, he sees what happens. Now, why do you think Paul ended all his epistles with that epistle to Philemon? Okay, that was clearly telling uh, Onesimus, look, uh, I mean Philemon, this guy Onesimus messed you up, I know that, he did you wrong, but I want you to put that behind, and I want you to take him back as a brother, he's not the same person, he's a brother, I want you to forget all of that, don't hold it against him, take it back, and I can order you to do this, Paul says, if you read Philemon carefully, I can order you to do this, but I'm not. I'm going to ask you for love's sake, in a way. For love's sake. You know, and if he owes you anything or whatever, here's the classic, put that on my account. Charge it to me. And I tell Christians that. Somebody owes you, they didn't pay you, they this, that, that. Tell the Lord about it. Leave it with him. I mean, after all, if he were to exact from you everything you owe him, where would you be? You would. I wouldn't be talking to you right now. So this idea, this ability, it's a grace, and you've and you got to pray for it. It's not going to come natural. It's not part of our natural being. Uh, more so than ever before today where everyone seems to be, oh, I'll never forget. Uh, and Paul says what? Forgetting those things which are behind. Now look at this scripture in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. This will give you more of an understanding here of what he's trying to say. First Peter, so Peter picks up Paul's message here. Uh, chapter 3, look at verse 17. For it is better, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Amen. You don't need to go to college to understand this. It's better for you as a Christian, spiritually, if the will of God be so, if God that you're suffering for doing well, you didn't do anything wrong, you were taken advantage of. That suffering, oh, I was wrong. So what? Then for evil doing. 
and I wish God's people, when they, I talk to them, and if this comes out of their mouth, I tell them, I don't want to hear it. Well, this one this, and this one that, and oh boy, here we go. That means they got too much time on their hands. They're not forgetting the, the way the Lord wants them to. And uh, they're in trouble. They just think, they'll never grow that way. I should have a $10 bill for every Christian that has failed to grow because they're holding on to some grudge, some hurt, some little bitterness or something, and they just can't step away from it. And like I just said before, there's some sort of demonic comfort in, in knowing, well, I was wronged, you know, and I, I, I justify myself by saying I was wrong and I, I deserve some pity or understanding. No, you don't, okay? Who are you? Look, why would the Bible say looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith? Look, at, look unto him. You were wrong. You got badly dealt with. What about him? What did he do that was wrong? Look at what happened to him beaten and butchered by his own people, given over to the Gentiles, hung on a cross like a dog, looking unto him. Why? Because if you look to him, you'll get your eyes off of this stuff about you, you, you. And that's what these churches, especially the mega churches, are doing to Christians. It's all about you. It's all about your relationships, how to improve them and whatever, how to get peace out of them. Throw that stuff out the window. That is garbage. And it, it's just all designed by the devil, and it's so subtle. It's so, you know, it goes back to Eve in the garden. It goes back to Eve in the garden. You're going to surely die. Oh, come on. Why would God hold this back? I mean, God loves you, right? Yeah, and he's told you uh, you can have it. Yeah, but this particular tree he told you no good. Yeah, well, come on now. You can take a chance here. He loves you, and he seduced her. And... uh now, we're carrying that in our system, death. We're carrying it with us because of what she did and what her husband did. And uh, what can you do? It hurts the Christian life. Look look at 1 Peter 2. Here's another one. Just turn the page back to 1 Peter chapter 2 and, and look at verse 20. This is, this is so clear. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently. In other words, if you're wrong, and you're saying, well, I'm, if you did wrong and you're taking it patiently because it, it brought bad consequences to you, what do you want, a medal? <laughs> you deserve what you get. You reap what you sow. But, now look at the second part of that verse. But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Look at that again. If ye do well, I did well. I helped this one. I did that for this one, this one, this one. They ignored me. They acted like I, they didn't know me and or, or went on to say things about me. And you suffer for it. And you take it patiently. You just say, well, Lord, you'll deal with it. You, you tell me to just forgetting those things which are behind and cast my cares upon you. I'll let you deal with it. If you uh, take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. You take uh, Now look, I know a lot of Christians, you know, in Psalm 119, that verse, and they that fear thee will be, it will be glad. I am a companion, David said, Psalm 119, I think it's verse 73, 76, I got to look it up. Uh, I am a companion of all them that fear thee. And uh, they that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Now, I got to tell you something. This is a number of Christians not glad when they see Brother Militello, okay? Because I'm pretty bold and I'm pretty plain, especially in matters like this. Uh, I don't like dealing with babies who refuse to grow up. And I'll tell them that. And uh, so not every Christian is glad when they see Brother Militello because they have already that discernment to know, uh-oh, watch out. He's, he's liable to lower the boom on me. Amen. Amen. I'll do it if it's necessary. Amen. And, uh, and I'm not going to flatter people and make them feel good and, you know, all of that stuff. Uh, you know me. You've, you've heard me, <laughs> oh, I'm sure, many times before. And i got to put it out plainly. I've, I've got to answer to God. And this thing is a real problem in the church. Maybe you haven't experienced it as much as I have. 
But this victim mentality, which comes from our society, you know, woe is me, look what happened to me. I think I told you the story once in a New York courtroom. I was this guy. This fellow was about to be sentenced, and uh, the judge supposedly was a tough judge, from what I heard. And uh, this this fellow was going to give a justification for why he did what he did. I'm not going to go into the crimes, but it was you know I grew up in this uh, project here, and it was a miserable existence. My father was drunk came home, beat my mom a lot, my mother was no good, she did drugs, blah, 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 all of that. And uh, the judge was prepared for that. He knew he was going to get this. Somebody tipped him off that this was going to be the uh, speech that he was going to hear from this guy. And he was ready. And he had somebody waiting in the wings, a fella who grew up with this kid, went to the same school with him, grew up in the same projects, and he called him into the courtroom. And he said, uh, you know this fellow here? Yeah, I grew up with him. Uh huh. Okay, what about you? Uh, you made a success out of your life. Yeah. And tell me about your circumstances. Well, I grew up in the same projects. I had a broken family. My father was in prison. I never really knew him. And my mother this and that, my siblings or whatever. And the judge says, but you turned out, I, I mean, you made a success of your life. Yeah. Well, the judge looked at the defendant who was blaming his circumstances and saying, you had choices. You made the wrong choices. This friend of yours made the right choices. Now, what do you, do you want to acknowledge that it's you, the problem is you, and it's not society? You see, we don't, we don't like that. We, <laughs> we, we like to feel that we've been victimized. I've been abused. I've been misunderstood. I've been slandered. I, well, so what? If you're a Christian, so what? What in the world do you... I mean, what did the Lord go through? What are you really suffering down here anyway? Come on. And like I said, it's a growing problem. And the world, with this mindset of I'm a victim and poor me, has crept into the church. And by the way, this is why many relationships are failing. Many marriages are failing. Uh, th this idea of uh, you don't consider my needs and you're not sensitive to me. As if God exists to make you happy. You know, it's, it happens to be the other way around. We exist to make him happy. But uh, not, not in this society. And like I said before, and I'll say it again, there's some sort of satanic comfort in all of this. Some people really don't want to get it right. Because then they'll have nothing to talk about, right? They'll, they'll, they'll just, you know, go on. What are they going to say to other people? Or, uh, or sing the song, All is Well with My Soul. All is well with my soul. People ask me, how's it going? Amen, God's good to me. Nothing to complain about. I'm afraid to complain about. Read Exodus. Read what happened to the Jews when they complained. I'm walking around. I was just saying that in the store this morning. Bye. I talked to this clerk and I told him I was grateful for all the things God has given me. And he was amazed. And I wound up talking to him about the Lord and giving him a tract and telling him to get the peace that passeth all understanding. So what do I do? I'm here for one purpose only, to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and to magnify his word. Other than that, what's the purpose of my being here? It's all vanity here anyway. It's all baloney. The politics, the economics, the problems that people have, and uh, it has to end. And for those of us that have put our faith in Jesus Christ, it, thank God we know where we're going. It's going to end well. But in the meantime, make sure... You go to the Lord with this stuff and say, Lord, is there anything about my actions and behavior that's displeasing to you? Am I causing you some grief? Am I speaking the way a Christian should? And uh, I say in the morning, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Make sure what's coming out of my mouth and lips is appropriate and it'll please you. And I won't have to be put down at the judgment seat of Christ. Are you thinking that way? I hope so. Amen. Amen.